Hi guys, the Seattle Ring Hunter here. As a recreational diver, open circuit, I'm going to go ahead and share with you a little bit about nitrox diving. Currently, I actually picked myself up my own personal O2 analyzer so I can actually sample my own gas, my nitrox blends, uh, a point later after I've picked them up from the dive shop. If I want to reconfirm that number, I can do so on the fly. So it's really nice having that capability. The sensor technology has been around for quite some time and is very obtainable for any recreational diver that is considering to do a bit of uh, nitrox diving and want to have their own capabilities to measure. Here's the process that's used and commonly recognized. You will have practiced this process if you've become a nitrox certified diver, which I am. I've gone through the PADI training on that and I'm very familiar with that situation. And a lot of times um, you are required to test your cylinders before you take them and label them from the dive shop. With that being said, it's a similar process, same process in most situations. Your analyzer might be slightly different, the one that you buy, than the one that you've seen at your dive shop. But essentially, you have a O2 sensor and a computerized metering device that will put out a number after it's been uh, calibrated to ambient O2. Well, let's go through the process now. I'm going to share a little bit of that right now and some of the gear that I got put together. Enjoy this and uh, make a consideration for yourself if you're in the, um, a situation where you occasionally will go out and dive nitrox in your local area. Um, pick up an analyzer if you haven't picked one up already and uh, have that extra capability in your own hands. Okay, what I have here is a 100 cubic foot uh, steel cylinder that was uh, loaded to around 33% nitrox. For those that are um, familiar with the nitrox process, it is basically an enriched air and it's uh, basically they have blended a little more oxygen content. So ambient air, we all know that there's a 20.9, sometimes referred to as 21% oxygen in a regular air that we're breathing. Well we can actually take that oxygen percentage and blend it to a specific number all the way up to 40. More commonly, we're talking about 36% is commonly used at the high end. And with our dive tables and dive computers, we can calculate what our bottom maximum uh, depth is gonna be and maximum time allowed at that depth. Um, the problem in a nutshell could be if you were to stay down too long at those depths, you would be onloading more oxygen and your PPO2, your partial pressure of oxygen could go up past your threshold and put you in a bad situation. Or if you stay down too long, the uh, required amount of time for you to stop at different, uh, on your way as ascending, on your ascent, your stop times could out uh, last the amount of gas that you have on board, putting you in another bad situation as a either recreational diver. We're not talking tech diving at this point in this discussion. This is for recreational divers on a single tank and diving nitrox. So it's a fancy term that they used. Basically, it's just got an elevated or enriched content of, it's got a higher percentage of O2 that's been loaded into the cylinder. And like I said, um, anything above 40%, um, there's a real concern for flammability and the cleanliness of the equipment being used. Any particles or anything that's uh, impure that gets in there can be a combustion issue. So with that, there's a whole nother level of um, cleanliness that the uh, dive uh, cylinders and equipment need to be certified to and maintained to, to reduce and mitigate any potential flammability concerns. And it is a real concern. So with that being said, I just wanted to share with you a little bit. Um, this is pretty basic stuff for those that have been uh, through the nitrox certification process. Maybe you had it a while ago and you're a little rusty on it. We're not going to get into the fine details of it. But I just wanted to share a little bit of the process. Those that have gone through the nitrox training um, will have gone through the process of testing a cylinder and reading the value with a gauge, with a certified meter, um, O2 sensor, I should say more specifically at their dive shop. And that is typically required that the diver, when they pick up their cylinders, if they've ordered a, uh, you know, a 30%, 33%, 34% uh, nitrox load on their cylinder or whatever the case might be, um, that they verify that. Sometimes they uh, will write it in a log for the dive shop and sign off on it. So the dive shop has, you know, a, um, a full record of that for liability reasons and that you know keeping customer service and everybody on the same page as far as communications down the road if anything were to happen they have a log of that but more importantly we'll typically put uh, some type of a label if that's a little bit of masking tape and a sharpie pen or a official sticker or whatever the case may be the tank needs to be labeled so when you go to utilize the tank two or three weeks down the road for your dive 
you don't get confused and then go to your dive computer and put the wrong numbers in and dive the wrong profile on an unknown gas um, mixture which can put you in a very serious situation and definitely do not want to do that so these are the practices that we've been taught these are the practices that we follow and hopefully the practices that you may be interested in learning if you haven't become a nitrox certified diver definitely get with your dive master at your local dive shop and inquire about it they'll be more than happy to share with you uh, what it takes to get into a training course and to get fully certified on that so the way the analogs o2 analyzer comes it has this is probably like a delrin type of um, polymer very nicely machined and it typically has a little bit of a the hose bar plastic one um, that's screwed into the side here without the hose on it but um, i've attached the hose to it but for right now we're not going to utilize that but they have a pinhole and you just take and put it up here and you hold it on there you first calibrate this to 20.9 that calibrates it before each use that's with the ambient air coming into it and then you can press it up here and crack the valve and you're holding on there with pressure and you hold it there for a while until the, the reading settles out then you um, can hold that reading and mark the reading as being the um, percentage of O2 that you have in your cylinder and that's what you would program into your dive computer uh, this is a uh, a valid and proper way of testing it will hold the air in there but if you want to be a little more um, connected with your termination here you don't want to lose any gas you're not going to lose much gas by doing a little sample it's uh, perfectly fine to do that especially if you had a lot of tanks you want to do that you can just go through the, the tanks and test them all and jot down the number on each one of them but if we want to make a more of a proper connection there's a way of doing that and we'll show you that here in a moment when we get all connected up. So we'll go ahead and take our dive soft. Uh, this is a flow limiter, 0 0.2 liters per minute, uh, very low and slow, and it's got a regulate later in here. So it's actually going to contain or maintain that level of flow to the output, even if the tank is uh, lower on uh, pressure or gets lower, we're gonna have a consistent um, output sampling. So with that being said, we got our bleeder turned in so we're not going to lose any gas and then we also have a little bit of a, a valve at the very end here if we turn it all the way in uh, no gas will flow out of the end so we can actually crack the uh, cylinder at this point and that pressure is not uh, there's no gas flow coming out at this point so with that being said let's go ahead and switch uh, our attention over to the uh, analog O2 sensor and we have this dust cap like I mentioned earlier that's just kind of a uh, prolonging the life of the O2 sensor so it's just not constantly getting um, access to ambient air and oxygen so if we can open that up it's perfectly fine we'll open up that dust cap and we can actually turn it on with this button and what you would do is you just sit there and let the ambient air get into it we can also if we wanted to can kind of leave it open but we want to go to 20 Point nine. Just turn it till we get to 20.9 and make sure it settles out there. It is currently at 20.9 and that is calibrated to our ambient air. And then we can connect this here. And when we crack this valve here at the end, gas will start to flow. And we're looking at this, and our numbers are going up consistently. 31, 32.5678.9, so 33.0 through 3.1, 33.2, 33.3, 33.4, and it's settled at 33.5. very consistently settling at 33.5 if we push the button on the side of this we get two dots as if it were like a clock but that's telling me that it's in the hold position and we can turn off the gas and we've used we've had a very consistent sampling rate going through this like i said 0.2 liters per minute very consistent sampling 
over that period of time and it was very consistent and it's uh, 33.5 I'm very uh, pleased with that and the way that this is operating and at this point we can actually um, move remove this we could put our dust cap back on here and if we had more uh, cylinders that we wanted to analyze we definitely could do that 33.5 And that is what we currently analyzed, uh, our analyzer showed. That is really cool. This will time out and turn itself off in a moment. And to take this off, if we wanted to take all this apart and take it off, right now we have it closed here, but we still have high pressure going into the regulator. So we want to bleed that. So to bleed that, when the first thing we can do is secure our hose. We don't want that to get damaged in any way or to fall off, get dirty. Uh, we can turn off our cylinder valve and then we can bleed it off and then we can remove it and do what we need to do with the cylinder. Here's how it looks all packed up in the uh, container that I got, which is a Pelican case, 1120. Um, got my information on there in case it gets placed somewhere and somebody needs to contact me, which I won't be letting this get out of my sight. Anyway, hope to have it for a long time. And that's what we do when we want to go ahead and take a gas sampling of a nitrox blend and go ahead and uh, appropriately label it on the side of our tank. And off we go diving. Cheers until next time. If you've lost your ring or a special item of value, please get in touch with me at the SeattleRingHunter.com as soon as possible so I can arrange to do a search for you.